You know, in doing research for this video, it's kind of funny because yesterday was Canada Day, July 1st, but yesterday, July 1st, was also a pretty significant day for DiPietro. No, not the DiPietro we're talking about in this video, but Rick DiPietro, former New York Islanders goaltender and first overall pick. Because he was bought out by the Islanders a few years ago after signing what was an absolutely massive deal, unproportionately and unnecessarily big and long, Every July 1st, Rick DiPietro gets paid $1.5 million for pretty much just doing nothing. And he'll be getting paid this amount of money every July 1st until 2029. So, New York, good morning to you guys. But when it comes to DiPietro, oddly enough, it is July 2nd, so it's after Canada Day, after Rick DiPietro Day. We're talking about another DiPietro that is actually not related to Rick, but just happens to have the same last name. Let's go over to the Abbotsford Canucks and go over a name that a lot of Canucks fans have been kind of pegging as a potential tweener, starter, sometime down the line. It's their 2017 third-round pick, Michael DiPietro. Now, DiPietro is a goaltender, as we have discussed. He was a pretty good pickup back in 2017 at the 64th overall position. He slipped that far because even though he was a pretty good goalie, he's only 6 feet 201, so he's definitely not in the bigger territory when it comes to goaltenders that are playing at the top levels of the world. But... DiPietro has progressed steadily. He was fantastic in the OHL. Eventually, he took his talents over to the Utica Comets, and he was pretty... not great. I mean, okay, his first pro season, he was playing in Utica. He had a positive record, a 21-11-2 stat line on the year, but he had a 908 save percentage and a 279 goals against. Definitely not bad for a first-year goaltender, and for a guy that actually got a call up to play with the Canucks because everybody was injured that season, he got absolutely lit up by the San Jose Sharks in the worst way possible. He posted up an 857 save percentage and a 716 goals against. It was not fun. But at the end of the day, even though he let in a whole bunch of goals, you could see him smiling towards the end. He's like, oh, well, they got another one because that was just kind of such a poor alignment of everybody else getting injured, etc., etc. But either way, his next season in Utica, a little bit better. He was kind of held back because he didn't play all too much. He had a 916 save percentage in the four games that he played, but it was so apparent that the Vancouver Canucks just did not really have a plan for DiPietro because they kept him around in Vancouver with the taxi squad or whatever the heck it was called, and the guy only played four games on the year. Now, sure, he practiced with the team, but playing and practicing are way different, especially if you are a goaltender. Anybody can go out there and validate those claims. And so, for a lot of Canucks fans, we felt that 2020-2021 was sort of, let's just say, the downfall year. The beginning of the end for DPH, because this is supposed to be a guy that is suiting up in his second pro year, taking that big step to becoming a pro goalie, like a good one, a really solid pro goalie. But he gets held back because he doesn't play any games. Not because he's hurt, but because there's a really weird situation with the league right now where Canadian players are over the border, you can't cross the border, there are restrictions because of the virus and tests and everything. It sucks. And DPH got the short end of the stick of that. So, heading into 2021-2022, the guy ended up playing in Abbotsford. He had himself a 34-game sample. He had a negative record, though, this time. He had a 901 save percentage and a 295 goals against, and he was not the best goalie on that team. He was outplayed by Spencer Martin, who had a 914 save percentage and a 243 goals against in 25 games played. Martin was also the mainstay guy for the team in the playoffs. He also had a few other goaltenders suiting up here and there. Joe Madurka, you had Arthur Silovs, Ryland Toth played a game too, so good for him to get that under his belt. But Michael DiPietro was all of a sudden in a position where, as the Abbotsford Canucks backup, let's say hybrid 1A, 1B situation goaltender, you didn't really see too much of a future for him when it comes to breaking into the NHL, because with Demko being as good as he is, he's going to be manning the Vancouver Canucks crease for the next foreseeable future. Like, he's going to be there for a long time. And Spencer Martin, who was really good in the AHL, is probably going to be the backup. He's 27 years old, so he's a lot more experienced, a lot more mature. Who knows whether or not he's going to be ever relocated from that backup position either. He looked really good in the limited Vancouver Canucks sample he had this season. Six games played, a 9-5-0 save percentage and a 1-7-4 goals against. That's phenomenal right there. 
Meanwhile, in Abbotsford, you have Arthur Selobs, who was also coming into the mix here, who was drafted by the Vancouver Canucks a little bit after they drafted Di Pietro in 2017, as Selobs was taken two years later. He had some pretty good development in Latvia, becoming a pro goaltender over there, and you eventually saw him playing some games in the ECHL, suiting up in Abbotsford, and just from the way the Vancouver Canucks talk about this guy, you can tell they're really high up on Silovs and his development. He even played at the World Championships this season, where in four games played for Latvia, he had a 9.52 save percentage and a 1-2-2 goals against. Talk about Latvian goaltenders stealing the show, shades of 2014, baby. And so you go over onto Donnie and Dolly. This is the segment on Twitter. I will leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to this audio. We're going over onto a Daily Hive article as well, because what Rob Williams did was he pretty much summarized what it was that was said by Donnie on this segment. Michael DiPietro, it's time for a change. He needs a fresh start. He's got to get out of here. He is falling behind sea lobs on the depth chart, Dollywell said Wednesday. Someone told me this morning that the Habs may have interest, and I think the Canucks are hopefully going to get him moved by next week. This video was being uploaded on Saturday, July 2nd, so hopefully by the time next week rolls around, it's July 9th, we have ourselves a solidified plan for DiPietro with some other team, whether that's Montreal, who really knows. We also had ourselves this quote from Rutherford from yesterday on DiPietro's future. We will have to see what happens. We have two goalies in Vancouver. He's talking about Martin and Demko. We've got two young guys in Abbey, Silovs and DiPietro, and we are looking for a veteran for Abbey as well. This is what we had heard from the team earlier on in the offseason, that yeah, the team is looking for a more veteran experienced goaltender to play in the AHL. Because you already have two goalies in Seelobs and DiPietro, one of them's got to go. And when it comes to DiPietro being that guy, all signs are pointing to him, so I feel like he is inevitably going to be shipped out. I've been saying this the entire time, preaching to the choir, but I think that the Vancouver Canucks, should they go out there and get a veteran goaltender to play in the AHL? Sign Corey Schneider, please! The guy's a free agent, and he is there! He was playing in the AHL last season, and he's probably going to be able to play there again. Sign Schneider, please! But either way, let's go over to the Montreal Canadiens and wrap this video up. Up with their entire situation over here. The Habs are in a pretty peculiar spot with goaltending. Carey Price, who knows what's going to go on with Carey Price, but you still have Jake Allen who is going to be there. Samuel Montembeau is an RFA, and you also have a few other goaltenders in the system that are just kind of there. I mean, Caden Primo needs a contract as well. We all saw what he did this previous season, and he wasn't really all too great. The AHL for the Laval Rocket definitely could use a little bit more bolstering in terms of getting guys that can consistently show up and always be there. We saw the entire carousel that the Canadians have gone through with their minor goaltending the past few years, pretty much. You had Andrew Hammond thrown in there, you had Michael McNiven, you had Kevin Poulin that was there. Poulin is not actually affiliated with an NHL team, even though he's playing for Laval. He does not have an NHL contract, so there you go. Maybe the Canadians would be looking for some guy who is a bit younger to kind of share the load and battle it out with Caden Primo to decide who's really going to take over the crease once Carey Price leaves and Jake Allen, I don't know, maybe gets traded or whatever. I mean, Allen and Price, they're a great tandem. We saw what they were able to do in 2020-2021. It's just for Carey Price being so uncertain heading into next season, there's a lot of questioning I think you can do. So, the Canadians looking for more goaltenders, not really a surprise for me. We all kind of meme about how the Habs have a lot of small players with Caulfield and Gallagher and Suzuki and even in the past, you know, the Richards and Morens and all that stuff. But like, Michael DiPietro, six feet tall goaltender, also is pretty short, so maybe he fits the bill for being a Hab sometime down the line. But talk in the comments either way, though, all about Michael DiPietro and his future. If you're a Canucks fan, what have you seen out of DiPietro the past few years, and where do you think he is going to go? Do you think last year, 2020-2021, the 56-game campaign shortened by the pandemic was the killer year for DiPietro and his hopes as a Vancouver Canucks goaltender because he did not do anything aside from practicing with the team? Thank you so much, Jim Benning, for setting that plan up in the motion. But where do you think he's going to go from here? Do you think Abbotsford should be the way to go? Would you like to see a veteran goaltender come in and battle it out with Seelovs? Or would you rather see DiPietro and Seelovs going at it one two, two young guys fighting each other for the crease, rather than having that extra veteran goaltender like a Corey Schneider, for example, come back instead? For me personally, I would love to see Schneider come back. And I'm only throwing his name out there because Schneider is... 
I mean, if you've seen the streams, I mean, I have all the figures of the guy, the Vancouver Canucks McFarlane figure, the New Jersey Imports Dragon figure over there. They just need to make an Islanders one. That's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Canadians fans, what are your thoughts on DiPietro in a situation? Do you think the Laval Rocket can help him out in that respect? Talk to the comments, like your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vitaage Rolls 99. And bye.